Hi, everybody. We're reading Cat Wings again. This is the third chapter of Ursula Le Guin's wonderful Alexander and the Cat Wings. Here's the first picture. Look at that. It was late in the evening again when at last, foot sore and starving hungry, the two kittens came in sight of the big old barn. High in the front wall were holes that had been made for pigeons to fly in and out of. Alexander blinked when he saw another weaned cat fly out of one of those pigeon holes, and then another, and then two more. The littlest one came swooping toward them, calling to the others, look, it's Jane. She's walking with a strange kitten. And all four of the winged cats came flying about poor Alexander's head until he put his paws over it and flattened himself on the ground. When he finally looked up, he saw the black kitten joyously flying loop-de-loops over the barn. Then she dived straight down into a bowl of kibble. Beside him sat a handsome young tabby cat with tabby wings. I'm Roger, the cat said, and we are the cat wings. Don't be afraid. I'm not afraid, Alexander said fiercely. I am Alexander Furby. I'm glad to know you, Alexander. Will you come and have some dinner with us? Roger said. Alexander did not need to be asked twice. When dinner was over, he was so tired and so full that all he could do was waddle after the black kitten into the barn. On the floor was a pile of sweet, dry hay. And in the hay, the two kittens curled up together, purred once and fell fast asleep. The next day, Alexander learned all the cat wings' names. Handsome Roger, Thoughtful Thelma, kind James, who limped a little on one wing, small Harriet, and his own special friend, the black kitten, their youngest sister, Jane. It seems sad to Alexander that Jane had not been able to tell him her own name. While she was off flying about somewhere, he asked Thelma about her. Well, Alexander, Thelma said, we're the only cats with wings in all the world, so as far as we know. We four older ones were born in the city underneath a dumpster. Our dear mother, like you, had no wings, <clears throat> but she was very wise. And as soon as we could fly well, she told us to fly far away. She knew that if we were caught, the people of the city would make shows of us and put us in cages and we would never have any freedom. By great good fortune, we came to this place where our friends Hank and Susan look after us. They take care that no one knows about us. They are your caretakers, said Alexander. Yes, said Thelma. Well, once James and Harriet returned to the city to visit our dear mother, they found our street in ruins, but hiding in an attic was a young black kitten with wings. It was Jane, said Alexander. Thelma nodded. Our little sister Jane. She was all alone and the building she was in was about to be destroyed. They rescued her. After they found our mother and visited with her, they brought Jane home to our farm. But little Jane has never said a word except me. And when she is frightened, she says, eight. We think something terrible happened to her when she was a young kitten separated from our mother. When she was hiding in the attic, Alexander asked? Yes, said Thelma. She won't even come up to the loft of the barn where we sleep. It must remind her of that attic. That's why she sleeps in the hay downstairs. She's well and seems happy enough, but she can't speak. She's very brave. She rescued me, Alexander said. I'm very glad she did, said Thelma. And she gently pushed him down and washed him quite hard all over, just as if she were his own mother. Thelma, Alexander said, my mother will be worried about me. 
We've talked about that, said Thelma. Susan and Hank will be here soon. Wait till you meet them. And here's the picture. And very soon over the hill came a boy and a girl with a can full of milk and a bag full of kibble. All the catmans came swooping about them and perched on their shoulders and heads and hands and noses and purred at them. And Susan and Hank laughed at the cat wings and petted them and threw kibbles up in the air for them to catch. But then they saw Alexander. Look, they said. Alexander came toward them rather shyly, waving his tail. It was golden and plumy like his mother's tail. Oh, said Susan. Oh, the poor little kitten. He doesn't have any wings. Her brother Hank laughed. Most kittens don't, Suze, he said. Susan was already holding Alexander and petting him, and Alexander was purring madly. Listen, Suze, Hank said, you know, mother has been saying that she would like to have a cat, but she can't have one of the cat wings because visitors might see it. If this is a stray kitten. So Alexander found himself being carried on Susan's shoulder over the hill to the farmhouse where the children lived. There the children's mother greeted him. Oh, she said, what a wonderful tail. What a wonderful kitten. And she scratched him under the chin. What an intelligent woman, Alexander thought. But where do you think he came from? The children's mother asked. Nobody knew. And Alexander could not tell them since cats and human beings don't talk the same way. He settled down at the farmhouse where he was treated very well though there were no sardines and no feather beds. At night, he could sleep with Susan or with Hank, but he was expected to live outdoors during the day and to catch mice when he grew up. Every day, he trotted over the hill to the old barn and played with Jane and the other cat wings. He was very happy. But he did think about his mother and father and sisters, and so one day when a red car drove into the farmhouse yard. He grew very excited and running with his plummy tail waving. And out of the little red car stepped the owner. Is that you, Alexander, he said. Alexander purred and rubbed his head on the owner's leg. Then he danced off to the front door for he wanted him to meet Hank and Susan and their mother and father. The owner came in and talked a while with the children's mother and father. The children's mother was polite, but her voice trembled a little when she said, I have become very fond of him, but he is your kitten. His sisters have an excellent new home, said the owner. I can only come to my country house now and then. Of course, Mr. and Mrs. Furby will live there. But if you could keep Alexander. I would truly be grateful. Oh, I should love to keep him, cried the children's mother. Alexander looked from one to the other, purred extremely loudly so that they both laughed. Every now and then when the owner came by in his red car with Mr. and Mrs. Furby so that Alexander could see his mother and father again. Mrs. Mrs. Furby always washed Alexander's face carefully and told him to be her own wonderful boy. Of course, said Alexander. Chapter four is next, so we'll stop there for today. Thank you for listening.